And I'm super excited we're live because since I intended to go live, I've had one computer reboot, <laughs> one modem check. Uh, it's been a little bit of a technology check, but I, I am here better late than never because today's show is a little different. I'm super excited to introduce you to one of my dearest friends, and we are going to be talking about building community and networking and resilience as you're building your company or uh, you know expanding on a new career. Uh, she's got a really, really cool and story uh, to share. So we're going to talk about that for today's Resilience Reset. And before we get into that, I just want to bring your attention to a post that I made on LinkedIn earlier today about Lead Hership Global. It is an organization that was founded by Linda Fisk. And I'll tell you, I don't know a, a more hardworking, and this says a lot, uh, human who has been more committed to connecting women across the globe who are incredible and for uh, just knowledge sharing and all of these incredible experiences different round tables. I'm doing a few speaking engagements for her. I've done some facilitation of boot camps, uh, very reasonably priced. So if you are a female who is either in business or navigating the corporate market, I'm gonna encourage you to reach out to me. I will introduce you directly to Linda uh, because if you're looking to find a tribe that is global in nature and just open yourself up to a whole new group of people, then uh, we're, I, I've got a place for you. So I wanted to share that with you because we are talking about networking, community building, and resilience today. And with that, I want to introduce you to uh, one of my favorite humans who used to be, well, we first met, let's see, there she is. Uh, okay, so we first met through her mom because her mom and I worked together, right? And then we became friends. She was in the fitness industry and she was one of my trainers for a long time. And then we became friends and I officiated her wedding. Uh, <laughs> please don't ask me to do that. She's the only person I would ever do it for. <laughs> it was a lot harder than I expected, uh, but it was so awesome. And then she decided to become a realtor. So shifted her career and ultimately ended up building an incredible real estate practice over COVID. So like barely got started pre-COVID, I think, well, we'll talk about the timeline. So that's sort of a bit of it, uh, based in London, Ontario, uh, just an incredible human. And I'm really excited to bring our conversation today between you, me, Jenna, and the fly that I know is buzzing around me and in camera so far this whole talk. <laughs> So anyway, we're just going to not worry about that. There's again, no wind at the lake. So uh, that's what happens. Okay. So awesome, Jenna. Good to have you with us. Yay. All right. Where do we want to so talk sick. or start? Where do we want to start? Um, Tell how me are you doing while yours. How, how is it going? Because like you're in real estate and COVID is definitely put some boundaries on that but yet it feels like the markets are like booming, right? Are they still at that level or is it kind of slowing down? It's, you know what, the, the market is really interesting. We obviously get asked this question every single day and we, we have to remember that right now it's summer. So in summer, it's, it's naturally gonna be a little bit slower and I'm finding too that because of COVID, everybody really needs a vacation. So there are less buyers right now than there were four months ago. Um, but no, COVID definitely, if anything, I think that because people were working from home, they were valuing their home base that much more. They needed more space. They were looking around. If they didn't like something in their house, it became really evident because <laughs> you're there all the time. So yeah it uh it picked up it boomed i remember when covid first hit and i was like oh man what am i gonna do <laughs> what am i gonna do and it literally it took about four weeks and then pew, <laughs> it took right off so yeah i know things things are good i missed open houses i did my first open house since covid had started this past weekend so that was interesting to kind of navigate like you had to make sure you knew where the groups were throughout the house and obviously contact tracing 
Um, but it was still really good to just like see people like there is no networking right now. So that was really nice. Mm -hmm. And you are uh, like more extroverted, right? Like than introverted or would you say like, yeah, like which one are you on the, uh, what side of the, the thing are you? And I know you, depends so on the I'm day. making an assumption. Yeah. It depends on the day. <laughs> yeah. It does. It... I'd like to say that I'm extroverted, but naturally I really just like being home. <laughs> right. But yeah, and I think yeah that it just was, depends on the day. Right. And that was one of the cool things I think with COVID is it kind of opened us up. Like when we were the people who were always like, go, 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 go. Like you did so many different networking things and we're starting to get involved in uh, like Power Up London. And I think it was called like different networking groups. And um, it's, I think with COVID, it sort of challenged us that we don't need to do that, right? Like we can still stay connected, but then again, you do miss it, right? Yeah, it's it's interesting because with what I found with COVID, especially at the beginning, was everybody was constantly putting out, um, like you're you're welcome to always have a conversation with me if you need something you know, let me know, like, I'm here for you. Like everybody was really promoting togetherness and, you know, come together. We're all in this together. Like, right. Like how many, I don't know. I'm sure there was a ton of apps and a ton of groups that were created so that communities could come together and they weren't so isolated and they weren't so alone. So that was, that was remarkable for sure. There just wasn't that, that physical connection, right. And forcing you to get out of your house, like, you know, how many webinars, I don't know about you, Allie, but I did a ton of interviews where, you know, my top was nice, but I was still in my, my pajama pants. Like, yeah, let's yeah. Be honest. I still do that. I'm still like, I got my big fuzzy socks on. <laughs> so let's be honest. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, okay, yeah. let's, uh, dive in because I mean, the story of resilience with you is significant and I can't get into all of the different pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. I don't like, but I remember, and you don't remember this, but I remember it. So I'm <laughs> going to remind our viewers or tell our viewers about it. So yeah, do it. about, cause when did you get your license? Would it have been two years ago or three years ago? Three, three, 2019. Oh, right. So that would be perfect. Cause I was still doing the resiliency ninja podcast which I no longer have, yeah. but all the replays are available. And I really encourage people to go back and listen to those because there was a lot of really great stuff. And I'm like, I, I did one episode was when should you quit? Mm -hmm. And it was very much an empowerment message of like, you got to, um, you know, choose, like decide, is it what you really, really want? And it, are, are the steps you're taking the right steps you need to take and maybe what you need to do is stop some of the steps you're doing and not quit the whole thing and the baby with the bathwater and it was I mean I did it three years ago but like it got released and then you called me and you were like to the day I remember I was walking my dogs listening to that and calling you right after I don't remember the quit part though Okay. So, well, you did. And I, well, okay. And I was like, well, no, you can't quit. I don't know you said. Should I quit? And I'm like, Why would you quit? No, I really <laughs> want to do this, but damn, it's hard. Damn, it's hard. And you know, sometimes it is hard, but like you had transitioned. And I think there could be people who are listening right now who are in one industry and then they decide to transfer into another industry. And like that transition might look like it could be shiny and bright and fancy and new, but it can be really, really, really freaking tough. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I don't know how many people transition from one industry to another that say that it was seamless. That's for sure. I know that like for me being in, in fitness for so long and being like super comfortable and I trained trainers and I knew what I was doing every single day, it became, it became just comfortable and easy and my family being in real estate. So I'm a third generation realtor. So is my brother. And they would always tell me, you know, you got to get into real estate, got to get into real estate. But I lived in the GTA at this point in time. And it wasn't something that I was going to, you know, jump on, especially being so far from family. We moved to London and I got laid off. I got laid off from, yeah. I was supposed to take on, I had like, at the time I had five clubs, five clubs under my wing. And then I was supposed to take on the rest of Southwestern Ontario. 
I got laid off. So I was just like, you know what? There's no time like the present. I just started studying and I got my license in six months. I hammered through it. That was very hard. Um, and I thought, you know, because <laughs> my brother being in real estate for at that time, he's got four years on me, I think, something like that. I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to like, you know, join my brother and we're just going to hit the ground running. Nope. <laughs> wasn't like that. No, he wasn't quite as uh, no. open to that as you thought. Well, he truthfully and, and fully respect and appreciate, but like real estate, there's so many realtors out there. There's so, so many realtors out there and it's kind of like you sink or swim, you know, like the top realtors out there do the majority of the business and, and it's for a reason, you know? So he had worked very hard to establish his reputation and, and do well for himself that I totally get why he wouldn't just, you know, let me ride on his coattails, nor am I that type of person anyway. So, you right. know, it's been, uh, yeah, it, it took me, I think I say it took me about nine months, nine months of like grinding hard in the community, reimmersing myself in London, because again, I, I had, hadn't been here for like 15 years before I started to get, get, get some momentum, get some movement happening. Yeah. And what do you think was, um, by the way, I'm going to ask you to move just a little bit over to your left because there you go, because we are there now we're together. Can you see us on the screen? I think, I don't think you can see us on the screen, but now you're actually, cause you were like a little bit too far over for the, um, cause we're doubling up. There you go. Okay. I got We're you figured out. Um, okay. <laughs> so what do you think? Because people will come to me and they'll be like, all right, how do I get connected? And you know, I used to teach networking, right? This was a big thing for me. And uh, it's not what I teach anymore. Although I still have clients who will call me and ask me to do uh, something, especially in this time with uh, COVID people need to be networking online. So what do you think are the things that you did to become one of those, I'm going to put you in the upper echelon of realtors because I know you're doing a lot of stuff. Like you're one of the people who's making stuff happen, right? Yeah. What, what is the work, the action that you actually did on a day-to-day -day basis that you were like, what am I doing this for? Is it the right thing to do? Like you did a lot of community building. Uh, what worked, what didn't? Whew, that's a really great question because it's, multifaceted, if you will. Um, I joined a lot of podcasts. I'm a firm believer in copy the habits of successful people, Tony Robinson, Robbins there. <laughs> and yeah, I, I needed to find what like really stuck to me, like what was authentic to me, you know, so like reading about what successful people do, how do they get to be successful? What called to me? What what was authentic to who I am as a person. And ultimately that's where those community connections, I call them community connections. That's where I landed. Um, because I, for the most part, I just generally like to get to know people. And when I was in fitness, it was the same way. I would meet someone new. They would tell me their story. What are they, what are they looking to accomplish? And then I just like, I'm a problem solver. I just figure out, okay, so if we take this piece and this piece, how do we make it you know, a puzzle. And it's honestly, it's the same in real estate. So I networked, I just met as many people as I could, I interviewed them, I put together these community connection videos that I could post and publish. And then so it would promote them while, you know, getting me top of mind. And so I just rolled with it. And was there anything that you did that was like, wasn't a good use of your time? Like if you look back, you thought mm, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or was it all like systematically just kind of working together to come together? Well, even at times with the community connections, like, you know, social media is a fickle beast, right? Like, like unless you are, you know, paying a company a ton of money to get all of that visibility I could do, you know, the best interview out there possible, but what if only 10 people see it, you know? So like, it's, you know, it's give or take. So at the end of the day, so when I, I look just, at those community, I just want to joke a little bit. Um, welcome to my world. Yeah. I know you get <laughs> it. I do this all the time yeah. and I don't have huge numbers. And I think though, what is been important for me in that perspective is I'm like, okay, First of all, if I can touch one life, my day has been worthwhile. 
Second of all, it, right? Like that is huge for me. It's one of my guiding principles and that's been along for a really long, long, long time that I've done that. Um, so <laughs> that's awesome. And of course you want to expand to get more. But I also think that the consistency, like I've been doing this for four or five months now where I do the four times a week and it's starting to build and people aren't necessarily coming always when it's live, like big numbers, but I'm hearing from like prospective clients, like, oh my gosh, yeah, of course I want to talk to you. I watch your lives on the replay. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. then that trickles out to be, and I think sometimes people will, you know, say nobody's watching right? And then stop doing it or not want to do it anymore because nobody's watching when in actual fact, if one person is watching and you keep going, eventually it's yeah. going to be a snowball. That, that at least so, has been how I've sort of approached it. Maybe wrong or right. I don't know. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. And it could be like, you know, a few months later and you run into somebody or you catch them online or whatever. They're like, oh, I saw this. And then you're like, really? You did? Oh, like that. Okay, so somebody did see it, right? Like one of those moments. So I totally get that. <laughs> yeah, and you never know, yeah. right? Whose life you're going to touch when yeah. you're going to touch it. Yeah, that's the beauty of uh, connecting, human connection, right? Yeah, for sure. So when you did all of that, I guess when COVID happened, though, you couldn't keep doing all those interviews because you were going to everybody's shop. Like, did you keep going? I was on yours at one point. Yeah. Yeah, you were on it. Uh, Lori Hawkins, I did. Uh, Redbird Media. Um, one eight hundred got junk, so I just did them via Zoom. I still well, did them works. via Zoom. Yeah, there's a ton of them on our YouTube channel and on our website. And um, it's interesting because so my brother and I we've officially joined as Team Brooks uh, come January of this year. So we're doing like a, a rebrand and, and a mapping out. So with that concept, we're we're building our business spotlights because you know it's it's. I really just feel like the more people that you know, the better you are as a human being, and especially if they're genuine connections, right? So we're just uh, yeah. So we'll we'll continue to do those. Those are going to come out, and I'm excited about that. Awesome. Yeah. So how are you transitioning? Uh, one of the biggest questions about community networking and actually transitioning into business is always coming up and I have my opinions, but I want to hear yours. So as mm -hmm. a realtor or anybody who's in sales and there are like lots of them, you know, who watch the show, right? What is your tip for balancing that? Like, I want to build a relationship with you and I want to, serve you in business? How do you, how do you do that balance and that transition? So that's interesting because I don't know that you can teach that. Oh, are you still there? There you go. Yeah, yeah, I'm still there here. You. I'm just making you uh, the solo for your thing. I'm oh, playing with my well. camera angles. <laughs> <laughs> so you um, go ahead. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that it's um, it's a fine line because so I used to teach sales with within fitness, like how to actually be a, a fitness consultant and connect with people and figure out what their needs and their wants are. And and so, you know, you can write a script about it. You can teach those 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 steps. But the the actual connection, being able to read somebody's body language and, and actually like, no, like really pick up on it. Um, I think that comes with, with time and experience. And I do think that there's a part of it that you can't teach. Like, it's just, it's natural. So I can give you an example. Like there are a handful of transactions that I did this year, actually, that were people that I met like in my very first year, like door knocking. And I just stayed in touch with them. You know, I'm just reaching out to them, seeing how they're doing what's going on in their world, like just genuine, genuine cons uh, consideration. And I think that that's really like the big difference. And it's interesting about not being able to teach it. So, but at yeah, the right. same time, <laughs> what's that? Well, no, I like, cause I, I often have debated this, right? Like, I mean, I remember I once did a talk for one of the big four accounting firms on networking. And at the end of the first workshop, 
uh, they all started laughing, like the organizers, and I'm like, what are you laughing at? And she said, well, we actually had a bet going on that we didn't think you could actually teach this, right? Like that you couldn't break it down systematically for somebody uh, because a lot of our people were really struggling. And I'm like, and I'm like, well, who was like who? And there was one person who was like, yes, you can, <laughs> right? And so, but it's still that nuance, right? Like that charisma, that ability is, you're right. It is really, really, really tough to, to teach. Yeah. yeah. But you well, did. And like you said, you built these strategies, like, you know, you can write it all out and you can teach somebody and you can role play with them. And then they can like, they can get it in that moment. But it's just like when you're training, you know, Winston, or you're doing karate or whatever it is, like, unless you literally like practice it day in and day out so that it becomes second nature, like how does anybody change their stripes? So you know? true. So we now, yeah. Like, I need to practice. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, I think it's just easier for some people than others because it, it, it comes more natural. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think like, so I was just reading uh, one of the books I read recently was Grit. And the concept there, always when I talk about a book, I pull it from my little stash of books. And she talks yeah. about passion and perseverance being key. So if you aren't naturally talented at, uh, you know, sales, for example, but if you're passionate about what you're selling and you have perseverance and you're never going to give up and you're going to keep learning and learning and learning, with a growth mindset, uh, if you couple it with um, Carol, uh, Dweck's, Carol Dweck's book on mindset and growth mindset, then ultimately you can. It's just, it's gonna take you a long, long time, right? To get yeah. there. It's not gonna happen as fast as you really, I think, want it to. Uh, you know who's watching us is James Smith. Ah, James. <laughs> How fun is that? See, yes. And this power up London. Yeah. Is yeah. It, so what yeah. is happening with that? Is that still happening, Power Up London, or? <laughs> Nothing. No? Uh, yeah. Maybe we won't talk about no. that on, on air. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So what else? Like, so if people are, like, really thinking, okay, I want to build my presence. Take me through. So you said you did door knocking. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I did it. So I okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the key is to try everything and find out obviously what what sticks, right? What works what works for you. Um, I think to go to to talk on this and to go back to what you were just asking, like how do you get really good at sales? The the key is is to be passionate about what you're selling. Like I can't imagine, you know, I don't know, selling something that I didn't genuinely believe in or enjoy. You know, like I jet, like I love going through homes and I love hunting for people. Like, you know, once I find out what it is that you want and why you want it and what your needs are, like, I want to be that person to find it for you, you know? So like that, you can't teach that part. So for me, when I was like door knocking, if I don't get the opportunity to really like connect with somebody, it's, it's just going to be another person knocking on your door. Right. right. So yeah, so mm. I often have wondered that about real estate agents. Um, like, wouldn't it be boring? Because that's not something I'm interested in doing is checking out houses and trying to find it. But you've actually made it like a mission. Like, I'm going yeah. to find you the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, not only do I love the house, like love looking at houses. Like every house is so different. Some of the things I've seen, it's just mind blowing. It's amazing. Um, but I also just love being that person for you, right? Like I will, I will forever be in your world some, some way because I have facilitate facilitated that transformation for you, that, that change in life. Right. That's so really cool. I love that. Yeah. 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 I yeah, love yeah. that. Do you mm -hmm. miss fitness, the industry? No. Interesting. You were there Not for so long all. and so successful in it. Oh. Like you know what? It's world. funny. Yeah, it just, the chapter was done. Yeah. The chapter was to... done. I had, I had great times. Don't get me wrong. Like, I had some serious nostalgia longing for a time past. But, you know, I'm not in my 20s anymore. I'm like late 30s now. And it just, the gym world was actually very toxic. It was mm. very, very 
fantastic. So yeah, I don't miss it at all. Like I still am very heavy into fitness, yeah. but no, I don't miss the gym world at all. Was it toxic? How come? Like, you know me in toxic oh environments. I'm so anti-toxic environment. I just run. But wouldn't it make mm -hmm. sense that the very industry that is trying to get people, give people health and wellness <laughs> is not toxic? Um, I think I should be careful with what I say here. Fair enough. <laughs> I've got this like little like birdie on my shoulder being like, watch what you say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. No, yeah I, it I just... totally get that. You know what, to be politically correct, it was just a lot of long hours, like, I don't know, long, long hours and like you're six days a week and, you know, you're preaching balance, but you're not practicing it. Put it that way. And when you talk about balance, so, and this will be the last thing I want to talk about because our time is going to be up here very quickly. Got it goes fast, eh? Um, what... I can see the fly, but... Oh, yeah, it's there. I can just... He and I are friends, you know, we've just, we're bonding uh, until the fly swatter comes out after I'm off air. <laughs> then he's done. So anyway, Bye, uh, so let's talk about balance because, you know, one of my biggest things is stress management and destructive stress and how people are so desperately burning out um, or mm. just zomb like feeling like they're already burned out and zombieing, right? And I wonder mm -hmm. about in sales, which is commission based and mm -hmm. like being in real estate, but also the different hours that you work, right? Like people, it's the weekends, it's the nighttime. Like, how do you balance that? Or do you <laughs> like, maybe you don't balance it. A really um, good question. How do you be okay with that? You know, with being a realtor, you have, as being somebody who likes to be in control, um, you're not in control, like probably, you know, 90% of the time because you have to be reactive. Like my, my role in this world as a realtor is to be reactive. You are basically on back and call for your clients because if something comes up, you got to jump, you got to go do it. Like this morning I did three, I had to run to three different houses um, and that was not on my agenda. You know, like there's there's always going to be something and you are in negotiations sometimes till 1 a.m. And like you just you never know. So what I've really learned to do is to listen to my body. So I, I do have a set time like I do wake up at 530 every morning and I do go to the gym and I read and I listen to podcasts and, and I'm big on those things. I meditate as well. Um, but when I'm tired, I nap. Like this morning or this afternoon, yeah. you know, you and I were supposed to, to touch base. I'm like, I'm sorry. I just had a nap. Like I just woke up. I feel like a zombie. So like when you, when you're tired, you listen to your body. When you're hungry, you eat, you know, like it's, I think that you have to honor that and not judge yourself for that, especially, oh no, there is no especially. You just always have to do it. You have to. Right. Have to yeah. Honor. Totally agree with you. And I'm a huge person like on naps, right? Like I'm a huge proponent of them. I think that they're so, uh, so valuable if, if you have the flexibility to be able to do that. And I think what's so important about what you want to, you just said, and I want to just echo it for the listeners is guilt free time off, right? It's yes. like when you're in work mode, wear that hat and wear it intensely and be all in and be totally like I'm here. And when it's not work time, be totally all in on it's not work time and just so that I struggle that. with. Okay. You're not the mm -hmm. only one. Lots of people do. Yeah. And my, uh, my dear husband, he will attest to that. <laughs> it's very hard, especially because I am, my role is so reactive that like for me to put my phone aside and say, I am not working. I'm not looking at my phone. I could be missing out on something big and there is no, there is no end game with real estate because once one transaction is done and you continue to have those people in your life, like you still have to keep going. Like there is no end game. It's not like I get a salary and I'm cushy for the year. It's like, I know I got to keep going. I got to keep building my pipe for next year. And like, there's no end game. Right. So you got to be cautious with that. And I'm working on setting those boundaries for myself. 
Well, and, and then I wonder if there are different strategies to put into place where, you know, certain names might be, you know, uh, on do not disturb, right? Like, or like have, you know how in an iPhone you can actually um, put like different ringtones for certain people and have when you do your do not disturb, you can actually set people that they can always interrupt you. So, you know, right. maybe if there's a deal you're waiting on, that could be a strategy that may work. Yeah. That's fair. One and one strategy that I have employed and, and does work well is if, you know, let's say I got a handful of clients on the go and I am doing something that night, then I let them know, hey guys, like I'm unavailable from this time to this time. But there's just always that like, what if somebody new calls? Like <laughs> And they they you want to call. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. And mm -hmm. You know, we're not triaging heart attacks, but we are triaging hoses and there are a lot of quick turning arounds and things like that. So that can be really, yeah, difficult. Mm -hmm. All right, well, listen, I know we could talk forever. I am going to uh, wrap up the show. I'm gonna keep you here though, so don't go away. Uh, okay. The Now it's funny because we're using Ecamm Live today for this interview, it stalls on LinkedIn. So I'm going to keep us on, even though we're not on, and then we'll do. So just hang okay. tight. I'll come back. So I'll wrap up the show. <laughs> this has been the Resilience Reset. And uh, I hope you got some great ideas for your own life if you are building in, uh, you know, in this weird world that we're living in. And I am so grateful to be a part of it. Uh, Greg, thank you very much. Said great episode. So awesome to have you here, Greg. And uh, I believe it was a great episode because my friend Jenna is just brilliant and she's doing amazing things in the real estate market in London, Ontario. Uh, my favorite city. I know. <laughs> People are like, is it really your favorite city? I do love London, Ontario, even though I moved out to the lake. Uh, but it's still a considerable <laughs> moment. All right. Well, listen, folks, we will be back on Monday. Uh, next week, we are going to do either Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to do a show on mental health. That was a request from Corey, who listens to us over on Facebook. And so we're going to be talking about that. And then we are going to, uh, I'll probably dissect another book that I've read. We'll have Wildcard Wednesday. And uh, who knows what else. But in the meantime, I hope that you will stress less, do more, and be happier. Now, I'm going to keep the feed going for just a minute for LinkedIn to catch up so that it doesn't cut you off in the middle of the show. All right. See, this is what I do, but it'll it'll cut off early. I think that'll be good.